For today's demonstration, we're gonna make pamphlet stitch books. I'm gonna show you two different styles of books um, with just a different sewing for each one. You're gonna need a ruler, your knife, scissors, needle and thread, a bone folder, a pencil, and paper. So I've made these videos for my students specifically. If you're looking in your kit, you have letter sized sheets of paper. What you're gonna need to do is actually cut a bunch of them in half. Um, so you get half letter sized sheets of paper. And um, I have a stack of 10 here, so that's gonna be one book. And I have another stack of 10 here, and that's gonna be my second book. Um, in your packets, you also have just a couple of uh, print scraps. I thought it'd be nice to have something printed for the covers. So it's the, you'll notice, the same height as your half letter uh, size paper and a bit longer on either side than this letter size paper. And that's just so that the cover has plenty of space to wrap around um, your whole book. So again, I said I'm gonna show you two different methods. We're not gonna to get to sewing yet. Uh, we're gonna begin by just preparing our paper. There's two ways to do this. Um, I'm gonna show you both. So the first method is just to fold each of these sheets of paper in half, one by one. It's important to note that we are folding our paper with the grain direction running like so. Now I'm gonna take all of these folded uh, sheets of paper, which are called folios, and I am going to just nest them inside of one another. Now, it's important to note that I have now created um, something in book art land that's known as a signature. So the pamphlet stitch book is a single signature book. And right now my single signature book is made of, if I've counted correctly, 10 folios. Okay. For this sewing today, we're gonna use uh, three holes. You can use as many holes as you would like. Uh, the more holes you use, the more sewing you get to do. I'm gonna keep it really basic with just three holes. And again, we're using metric. So. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is very lightly in pencil, but I'm gonna do this dark enough for you to see on camera, is I'm just gonna measure in uh, two centimeters from each edge on the center fold in here and one in the middle. So our paper measures about 14 centimeters. Um, it should measure about that if you've cut a letter size sheet in half. And we're gonna mark then at the two centimeter mark the seven centimeter mark and the 12 centimeter mark. The other tool that you will need today that I forgot to mention at the beginning is a book binding awl. I have three examples here in my workstation. Um, this example has a removable tip. Very fancy. <laughs> This is an upgraded dental tool, or maybe it's downgraded, I'm not sure. I think it's upgraded. And this is a homemade tool uh, with deer antler and just a, I think this was a needle beforehand, um, a needle that's been inserted and epoxied into the deer antler. One of my favorite tools, so I'm gonna use that one today. The one that comes with the kit for my students is actually the needle tool for ceramics. I, I enjoy that tool very much, and uh, I think it's worth uh, the money. It's uh, not an expensive tool, and it lasts quite long. So what we're gonna do is we are going to um, establish our sewing stations and poke the holes through those stations. There's many ways to do this, but basically the motion is I'm gonna be pushing down towards my cutting mat 
and away from my body. And I keep this kind of a very low profile, so I'm pushing down with this finger and I'm pushing forward where the antler kind of hits my hand. I feel like I get good pressure this way, that's why I really like this tool. And I'm really just sliding this across my cutting mat. So that's it, I've made it through all of my paper and really aim down towards that cutting mat. So you're aiming for um, your holes to come out on the spine of the book. Now I've put pencil marks in here, so I would like to go back and erase them so at least my finished product won't be so marked up. If you can't, by the way, if you can't make it through all of the sheets of paper in one pass, that's fine. Um, you can block these into two sections and do five at a time or something like that. When you're done, just jog all those pieces of paper back together. And you can put your book binding all to the side. You don't need it for a minute until we do our next book. Uh, the other thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to um, fold a cover. So we just need to choose which cover we wanna use. I'm gonna use this one first. I think it's gonna give us a better visual for our end product. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this in half. it like I mean it. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to jog all these pages up inside of that cover. And again, I'm going to very carefully, once only once these pages are aligned, I am going to re-punch um, all of those sewing stations. So now I have my sewing stations punched through the text block interior, the signature, and through my paper covers. And now I'm ready to sew. So I need approximately two spine lengths of my book, plus enough to tie uh, a knot, which is usually, oh, not too much. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty slick at tying knots. So when I first start binding with my students, I don't like to stress them out. <laughs> so I suggest leaving, you know, a fair amount of thread for knotting. So that's about three, a little bit more than three spine lengths um, for knotting. And that's all the thread that you need to sew this whole book. So again, that was one spine length, two spine lengths, and I'm not being really particular about that measurement. And then that's the amount of thread I have left over. If I divide that in half, that gives me enough to tie a knot with those two long ends. Now the fun part we get to thread the needle. I've seen this done so many ways. Uh, you know, there's the just shove the needle on top of the thread method or shove the thread into the eye of the needle method. Whatever works for you is fine. Um, I've seen people like stick this in their mouths and that's fine too. Um, during this pandemic, I don't recommend doing much of sticking anything in your mouth. <laughs> so um, I had a student many years ago teach me uh, this little trick, which was to pinch the thread between my fingers. And you just barely see the tip of that thread, a little dot in there. And sometimes this, I find this really helpful. Uh, you can usually just place the needle on top of that thread because it has the thread will then have support. And the needle just tends to go most of the time just right on top of the thread. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and thread your needle about that far. So just so it has a little tail extra here, and if you want to think about that as just, you know, one of the ends that you're going to use to tie the knot with, that's fine. And I, use, I usually give this a little massage so that my needle knows what it's supposed to be doing, but that's what I'm going to be sewing with. So this binding is very simple. You can start on the outside or on the inside. Typically what I do is I start on the inside I have a slight preference towards that sewing. I think visually it looks a little bit better. Um, and for the things that I usually teach, uh, it seems to be more appropriate than starting from the outside, but certainly either one will work. The important thing to know is wherever you start, that's where the knot is gonna end up being. So you'll see how this works out. So you're gonna go through uh, the center sewing station and you're gonna go through that whole text block, a whole signature, and you're gonna go through the cover as well. 
and you are gonna come out on the other side of your cover. So you can see, I'm gonna leave a little tail inside of this book. If you feel more comfortable putting your thumb on it or your finger so that it doesn't escape, that's fine. From there, you usually sew up towards the head or tail of the book. I'm gonna call this the head since there's no content. Um, it's hard to say which is which. So I'm gonna sew up towards the head of the book and I'm gonna enter through the outside cover. See me entering in there? And I am going to go all the way through that whole signature and come out in the interior of the book. Now I'm gonna pull that snug, and when I do that, I'm gonna be careful not to pull the thread out of my needle. Now, this is the, the critical part of the book. So I wanna talk a little bit about how we got here. We're going through the center hole. We're gonna work our way all the way up to the head of the book, which is very simple. We only have three holes. Um, we're gonna work our way up towards the head of the book. Then when we get to the end, we're gonna change the direction of sewing. And when we come back, we're gonna sew all the way back until we get to this middle hole. We're gonna skip over this middle hole. And that's what's important about this structure. So when you have three holes, it's very simple. You just go in um, this center hole, the interior of the book. You come out on the cover. You go inside again on the head. And then when you're inside here, we're just gonna sew we're gonna jump all the way over that, that middle hole. We're gonna exit at the tail of the book. We have one last sewing to do. So we are exiting at the tail of the book and we are gonna sew into the center hole. So the center sewing station, we are gonna sew in here. Now I did this too perfectly. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's happening here. And I'll hold this up to the camera in a moment. But what we're looking for is We'll let it focus as well. We're looking for the center stitch to be on top of the two kind of tail ends of this book. We're looking for one of the tails to come out in this direction and we're looking for one of the tails to come out on this direction. And it does not matter which tail is which tail because if it's on like a different side, all you have to do is flip it around and it's you know where you need it to be or prefer it to be. Uh, this is the critical thing though that these threads are underneath this center stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten this up. Now, in this moment, this is where I'm gonna tie the square knot. And the square knot can be a little bit tricky. Um, so I have a separate demo just for it specifically. And I'm gonna use colored thread in that demo so you can see that on top of um, the surface that I'm working on. This is gonna be a little bit difficult to see. I'm trying to think if I can prop it up at all. So like always, I always have some random printing tools laying around the studio. So I'm gonna prop this up a little bit so maybe it's a little bit more easy to see on camera. How this is gonna work, um, you can turn this so that your longer end is the active end. And that might be helpful for you the first time that you do this knot. So this happens to be the end that has the needle on it, but it really does not matter. In fact, I can take my needle off completely. And I'm going to, so I don't accidentally stab myself. All right, let's see if I can do this without the camera shaking. So the first step is, this is important to know, this is what's gonna do all of the movement. So I am just gonna take the other thread, the little guy, and I'm just gonna hang on to him. He's not gonna do any kind of anything moving at all. This thread is my active thread. So this thread is gonna go over, and then it's gonna go up through that little sailboat shape. And I'm just gonna overhand knot this. Very simple. Now it's important to see what my hands both did. They just tied that evenly at the same time. This thread is still in this hand, okay? So I'm gonna take this thread, again, this is still the active one, and now I'm gonna cross it back over in the other direction. It's still on top. And I'm gonna reach under here, and I'm just gonna pull that thread so it's really going up through that hole again. 
And again, this is the important part. I'm going to just, with both hands, pull and tighten that knot outwards. That is the square knot. So we have some finishing work to do on this book. I like to leave a little bit of a tail in here to acknowledge that my book was hand sewn. And then you can shut the cover. I usually take my bone folder and give this a little massage. If you have any kind of um, strange volcano bursting happening from your sewing stations, your fingernail is a really good tool for massaging down any kind of burst through that's happening. Your bone folder is also good for doing that. And it just kind of that cleanup work makes this just a little bit more of a sophisticated book. From here, you have a couple of options. You can trim the covers so that they match up with the text block. I'll open this so you can see. You can do that on a large paper cutter and give it one big chop if you would like. You can line the spine up to the paper cutter and just chop it and have this be a nice flush surface. The other option that you have, of course, is to measure this distance and then reiterate that measurement on this side. Is there a preference? It's completely up to you. Before I do any of that, I just want to point out about our folding method at the beginning. So we folded each of these sheets of paper, each folio, one by one, and then we nested them inside of each other. So we end up with this beautiful formation that's even, it comes to a peak at the fore edge, and it's even. The other thing that we have here is that all of those uh, folios are set and nested inside of each other. And there's no air in there. So what we have is, um, it's a very tight, um, it's a very tight structure. But what happens is when you do that, you also build up, you know, there's these little microscopic pieces of air in the very tip of each peak of these folios. And that's impossible to see in this video. You can see it if you hold, if you fold instead a cover weight paper, something thicker, that uh, little air gap is a little bit more visual or visible, excuse me. And that really helps um, establish some of this V shape in here. Just that's established itself by the thickness of the paper. Each one is sort of being pushed out a little bit further. So in terms of the air gap, it's a total preference thing. One is not better than the other, but we're gonna do the other method, which ends up being a little bit more um, sloppy in some ways, but it's definitely faster. So I'm gonna quick trim this down on my paper cutter. The second pamphlet stitch we're gonna do today is, uh, we're just gonna do it with more holes so you can see how that works. So again, I have my 10 sheets of half letter size paper. It's been trimmed down and we're gonna sew onto this cover today. I'm gonna show you a different method of folding together your signature. And it has to do with folding everything all at once. And if you wanna be really brave, you could add in your cover too, but I'm not that brave. So it takes a couple of tries. I made that look too easy. Uh, but you wanna get this so that you're kind of, you're trying to imitate that peak that we saw in the other pamphlet stitch book. So sometimes what you have to do is kind of shift it in both directions or flop it over, do, do some kind of exercises with it, a little paper yoga, so you can get it to work out somewhat evenly. Once you get it there, make a commitment. Establish that fold with your hands first, and this is when you can pull in your cover and it'll be a little bit more pleasant for you. Um, so you can give this a very gentle fold. You don't wanna go too far because you really want to establish these two things at the same time together. So what we have here is our big air gap is in here and you can compare that to this much smaller air gap that's in this book. This is just has more of a bow to it and this has more of a peak. That's the main difference. So I'm gonna uh, jog all my pages in here. And then with my thumb, I'm really gonna press down. And then very carefully with my bone folder, I'm gonna establish that fold. 
So there we go. That's the second method for folding your book and the signature with the cover. We're gonna keep our math equally simple today for this book. And if your cover is being mischievous at this point, you can put it to the wayside, that's fine. So again, I'm gonna measure in two centimeters, excuse me, two centimeters from each edge, the center. And let's do, well, we could do this however we would like. <laughs> let's also go uh, four centimeters from each edge. So let me reiterate what those numbers are. We have two centimeters, four centimeters, seven centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 12 centimeters. That gives us five holes that we're gonna be sewing with. So again, jog up all those pa uh, pages. If you're concerned that you're not gonna make it through them all at the same time, that's fine. Don't, don't be afraid to break this up into sections. Okay, <laughs> a little interruption there. So this time we have five sewing stations. So we're gonna go ahead and punch those five sewing stations with our awl. If you can't make it through all of your signatures, that's fine. This is not um, a competition. All you have to do is use one of these, this top one that you have marked as a stencil. And you can do, you can break your packet in half or in thirds, whatever seems most convenient for you. The important thing is, is that you jog up all of those sheets of paper uh, before you punch any holes. So again, this motion is just kind of pointing towards your cutting mat, sliding it forward. You're using, it's not a stabbing motion, it's just kind of a pushing and sliding motion. And you want to push those all the way up through the spine that's how that goes. If you would like to use just this top sheet to punch the other ones, that's fine too. Again, make sure you jog up those sheets of paper. It's much easier to punch one sheet of paper. And I'm gonna put everything back in its place and I'm gonna come in with my eraser and I'm gonna clean up those pencil marks in there. For this binding, you again need two spine lengths. I'm gonna use a uh, different color thread this time, just so it might be easier to see on camera. So two spine lengths, there's one, there's two, and enough to tie a knot. And you'll be able to tie the knot eventually with very little thread. Now we'll see if I can struggle more with threading this time. This thread is a little bit thicker. Typically they say you should use the end of the thread that you just cut, which is this end. And it looks a little fuzzy to me, but you know, we'll see. If it is really fuzzy, you can always give it a small haircut. <laughs> That's a completely legal maneuver. So again, I'm gonna use the method where I pinch the thread between my fingers and I place the needle down onto the thread. It's magical, I love this method. <laughs> it's also one of the reasons I love teaching because that was a trick one of my students taught me. Again, we are gonna start in the middle. So we're gonna enter the center uh, sewing station and we're gonna go all the way through out the back cover. You'll notice that I haven't tied my thread onto my needle at any point. It's important that you don't do that. Um, you don't need or don't want, especially the extra bulk of the knot to have to pull through and expand those holes every time you sew through a sewing station. 
All right, so just like before, we're gonna head up towards the head of the book. So I'm entering in my cover, and this is gonna be a little bit squirrelier, I think, than the first book, which is good, it's a good example. I'm gonna enter into my text block. It's a little bit squirrelier, I think, because my thread is a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna tighten as I go. Okay. So like before, I'm just gonna keep going to the, the head of the book. So we didn't have all, we didn't have any extra holes before. So we didn't really have anywhere to keep going, but we do now. So we're gonna just keep stitching. Now, if we had more holes, we would just keep going in and out, in and out until we got to the last hole. So this is our last sewing station. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch my directions of sewing switch my direction of sewing. And I'm gonna head back down, I'm gonna to head towards the tail of the book. And I just wanna remind you, it's important to remember this. Um, when you get to that center hole, don't sew through it. You're gonna skip over it. Okay, so tighten as you go. So I'm at the center hole, I am not going to sew into this hole. I'm gonna skip over it. And I'm gonna head down here. So if you had all, you know, 23 holes, you would just keep sewing all the way up until that you reach the head of the book and you change your sewing direction. Sew all the way back down, but then you skip over the center hole. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in from the cover to the interior. I'm gonna exit. So now I'm switching my direction of sewing again because I've made it all the way down to the tail of the book. And I'm going to exit the book and you'll see my stitches. They've made it all the way across this side, but they haven't yet made it all the way across this side. So it tells you where to go. Our last step is to sew into the middle because we're done. We're done sewing. Okay, so. Unlike before, this didn't come out perfectly, which is fine. It's actually a great example to show you. So I'm gonna elevate my book up for the camera again, hoping that you can see this a little bit more clearly, what's happened. So right now I have my two threads coming out here and I have this stitch over here. It's a very simple solution. I'm just gonna go underneath that thread. Okay, so now my thread is on top and I'm gonna tighten gently. Over tighten, because you can rip your sewing station. And if you're concerned at all about looseness, it's fine. It's um, generally such a short binding, um, it's not gonna be a big deal. And when you fold this back up, um, things can kind of stretch back out and distribute themselves. So if you're worried about that slack, don't worry. Okay, our job now, I'm gonna rotate this so I can do all of my action um, with this side, my longer side. I'm gonna take my needle off, but you don't have to again. And uh, I'm going to hold this inactive, very low activity thread here. This is my high activity thread. Ooh, see, high activity, it's misbehaving. So I'm gonna make this shape, sometimes I describe it as the number four. Sometimes I describe it as a sailboat. Whatever works for you is fine. But it's crossing over on top and it's making that shape. You can call it a tree. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tail and I'm just gonna come up through that hole. And you'll notice I did not let go of this thread over here and I'm going to tighten this, and I'm pulling this very particularly <laughs> so you can see how important that part is. It's not um, something you want to overlook. I'm really just pulling it evenly, perpendicular to the center, uh, the seam here, the fold. Now, what I'm gonna do is this is still the active side. I'm gonna make it look like a reverse number four or a reverse sailboat, whatever you wanna call it. Reverse shape, <laughs> a flag, I don't know. And again, I'm on top here and I'm gonna take my tail and I'm just gonna come up through that hole. 
Now, here's the last and final important part. I'm gonna grab this uh, long end and notice how my hands are pulling equally but away from each other, okay? That is your square knot. That is your pamphlet stitch book. Okay, again, you can go trim these covers so they're nice and flush. And you'll end up with a nice little pair of similar books. They're gonna have just different uh, amount of stitching on them. But on the inside, they look pretty similar.